I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and this is, well it's a disc man, but this is the Shanling EC Mini. This is a new, that's right, a new compact disc player. And before you step away from this video, I wanna tell you real quickly why I still use CDs and why maybe you shouldn't be using CDs, but maybe why you should use CDs. As you can see, I still like compact discs. So to start with real quickly, why you shouldn't buy CDs or be into CDs in general is if you're not an album listener, right? If you're listening to the top 40 tracks and skipping around from single to single, obviously doing that on compact discs is a pain in the butt. Don't look into CDs if that's what you're into. Also, if you're looking for sound quality that is exceptionally better than what you would get out of Spotify or you know even a, a high-res download store like Koba's, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend that because honestly, the audio quality that you get out of a CD if you're downloading FLAC files from Kobas or something similar, Bandcamp, it's literally the exact same data, okay? There's not like an audio improvement that you're gonna get by listening to it directly off of a compact disc using a laser. It's the same data. So I wouldn't necessarily be into CDs for the sound quality. The one exception, and this is where I'm gonna get into why I still like compact discs. The one exception is when it comes to version control, okay? And here's what I mean. If you're buying an album on, let's say, again, Kobuz or Bandcamp, or iTunes, or wherever you buy your music, you are getting one version of that album. They don't usually have, you know, all 50 versions of an album that have been produced over the years. Now, if you're listening to modern music, it's not necessarily the case, but if you are listening to something like this, and I'll pull this into view so we can take a look at it, this is a Queen album that I've got. And over the years, you know, this thing was produced, I believe in 1975, over the years, they've made a bunch of different versions of this album. They've remastered it slightly, reprinted it in different ways, and all those different versions sound slightly different. At least some of them do. Now, when you are using streaming services or downloading your music on the internet, you're gonna be stuck with whatever version there is. But if you're buying CDs, you can go out of your way to find a version of it that was made in Germany in 1975. And if that kind of version control is important to you, that can actually make a pretty significant difference in the sound quality uh, if you know what you're looking for. And so that's part of why I'm into CDs. And then the other part is just adding a little bit of physicality to the experience, right? I own these albums on disc. It's fun to rip them to FLAC files and listen to those FLAC files and just kind of know that I own a little bit of physicality behind it. So that's why for me, compact discs are still surprisingly relevant. And it might not make sense for you, but if it does make sense for you, I wanted to talk about the Shanling EC Mini, which is interestingly not the only compact disc player that's coming out recently, or at least that was announced recently. Last year, I think over the past year, Shanling's had a couple of different compact disc players, this one being the most compact, the most portable. But also Moondrop had at some point announced this guy. This is the, uh, the Disc Dream, which unfortunately never really got across the finish line. I don't think that thing is for sale. And I did want this video to be actually a comparison between those two CD players, but it's not. It's just gonna be a review of the EC Mini, what it's like in the the experience of an audiophile, modern audiophile like me. So let's, let's talk about this guy real quick. Uh, this thing's not super cheap, but also not ridiculously expensive. It's about 360 bucks, which compared to your average digital audio player is honestly about in line, uh, if not on the budget side. So, okay, there you go. Obviously it plays CDs. In fact, let's see if I can power this thing on real quick. I'll do this. It's a little bit slow to operate as uh, most analog things are. So while this thing is working, uh, I'll say that it's a CD player. Um, it can also serve as an external DAC for your computer. You can plug it in via USB, use this thing as a DAC as well. It also has a micro SD card slot on the back. So if you have your own music already ripped to FLAC files, you can use this thing ostensibly as a DAP, and, um, but really the compact disc is, is the reason that this thing is interesting to me. Okay, so that is kind of the general uh, gist of this player. Let's get into talking about my experience with this thing. I'm going to start by talking about the physical form factor. We'll get into the experience, the, uh, the usability and functionality of the player. We'll talk a little bit about the sound, what this thing sounds like, and then I'll give it a score like I typically do. So physical stuff. Let's um, move this box aside and I'll just kind of give you a tour of the front and back as we go through it. But 
One thing that stands out right away is that this is a front loader, right? It's a slot loading compact disc player rather than a top loading player. And that, you know, it has some implications, um, including one, it's a little bit slow, as you can see, to kind of eject and, and retract the thing, but that's okay, I suppose. Um, ostensibly, you could stack things on top of it, although, as you can see, there's a screen and some buttons on the top. So unfortunately, that's, that's kind of a bummer, uh, not really stackable because of that. And honestly, I feel like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity that they went with the slot loading mechanism just because I don't get to see the CD spinning. And like I mentioned, one of the things, one of the reasons I still like using compact discs is for that physicality, that little bit of extra fun in the experience. And when this is all you see when the thing is playing, it is maybe a little bit of a bummer. Now, the unit itself is fairly plain looking, like it's just kind of a generic aluminum metal chassis. And this is nice metal, like it's all premium materials. Um, but it is a little bit on the plain looking side. It kind of looks like a, like a shit DAC or amp or something like that, which maybe is a good thing because it'll kind of fit into your existing audio stack. But I don't know. There you go. It is also a little bit on the heavy side. And as you can see, it is a chonker. Um, this is for reference, kind of an old classic disc man. Um, this thing also a chonker of sorts, but a lot lighter because it's made out of plastic, but also just a lot more compact. Um, Definitely not getting any more compactness with the, the, the future technology we're working with. This thing was probably made like 30 plus years ago. Uh, and this is what you get now. Okay. Um, anything else to talk about? No, I don't think so. So let's talk about sort of the inputs and outputs on this device. Uh, and again, we'll punch in on that. So on the front, just to highlight real quickly, you do have two different headphone jacks. You've got a standard 3.5 mil as well as a 4.4 balanced connector. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the sound a little bit. No, I don't even need to wait until later to talk about it. The sound output is different. Um, the volume output that you get on these things is different. On the uh, 3.5, let me double check just to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's 140 milliwatts of power at 32 ohms. That's right. And then on the balance connector, you get 248 milliwatts of power on the balance on a, on at 32 ohms. Now that's not honestly a lot of power. It's decent for a entry level DAP or something like that. But um, I guess I would like to see a little bit more. The only thing that I really played on or played with that kind of taxed the the outputs on this guy were uh, the Dan Clark E3s where I definitely got these things plenty loud. This thing does get the headphones a little bit louder than my MacBook Air, but not a whole lot louder. So just to kind of put that into context, but certainly loud enough for my listening experience. Okay, continuing the inputs and outputs, let's go around on the back of the device and you can see what we got. You have a couple of um, RCA connectors, so you could output this thing to an amp um, rather than listening to it through the headphone jack. Up to you, uh, the aforementioned micro SD card slot. So if you wanted to listen to your FLAC library on your CD player, you could, but not the most compact way to do that, of course. Uh, and then a couple of different USB connectors. So one is for charging. Uh, we haven't, I guess, dived into this yet. This thing has batteries built into it. Uh, so you can recharge it, which is pretty cool. And the other is for a uh, digital connection to your computer, right? So like I mentioned, you can use this thing as an external DAC for your computer if you want to have just one headphone jack um, that you're using for all of the audio running through your computer. We'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, the only thing that I did want to mention while we're on the back of this, I guess I'll highlight quickly, there is an in-vehicle mode where this thing can turn on and off automatically if you're using it in a car and it does have Bluetooth built into it if you want to listen to compact discs over Bluetooth. Um, that's all the, all the future, modern, modern future uh, uh, accoutrement. But the, the one thing I did want to mention real quickly about the USB DAC functionality um, is that sadly there's no... Okay, it's not totally true. I wrote down that there's no USB out, but there is. You can use this as a transport, a, a, a CD transport to output to an external DAC. If you don't like the DAC in this thing, you can use this thing to output the USB signal, the digital signal that it's reading from a compact disc out to your external DAC and listen to the music that way. Unfortunately, what you can't do, and this is what I was hoping for, is you can't use this as an external disc drive for your computer. Uh, again, if you're like me and you've got a library of compact discs, I like to rip these things to FLAC files as soon as I buy them. And to do that, I need a disk drive on my computer, which a lot of computers don't have disk drives anymore. So it would have been nice if the EC Mini could be used in, as an external disk drive, uh, but unfortunately it does not have that functionality. 
Okay, um, let's now talk about the controls briefly and I'll switch around back over here to the front of the device. Um, the one thing I'll just say about the controls up, up front is that they are not very well differentiated or that is to say they are not differentiated at all. All these buttons are the same shape. They are kind of even when, you know, there's a little bit of glare on this this panel. And let's see if I can simulate it. No, I don't. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a little bit of a simulation, right? So when you have a little bit of glare on this panel, because it is kind of like a, I don't know if it's glass or a plastic, but it is glossy. You can't tell what these buttons do. So you have to like, you have to be able to read it. And it would be nice if the buttons were laid out in a way where you could do it by, by feel, right? When I'm using digital audio players, portable audio players, for me, that's important, is being able to use a player without having to look at it. And this thing is definitely not a player that you can use without looking at it. So I found that to be a little bit of a bummer. Um, the other thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that, like I mentioned before, there is a screen and some buttons on top, which prevent you from being able to stack things on top of this device, which would be kind of like the only selling point, in my opinion, for having a front loader device would be the stackability. But because there's buttons up here, you can't. And again, like the button layout's a little bit weird. These are just the, the, the track skipping buttons are the only buttons that they've, they've thrown up on top there, which is, I don't know, maybe, maybe kind of an odd choice. And then the layout also is weird because previous track is up and next track is down, which I don't know, I feel like it should either be left or right, or these should be reversed. But anyway, okay. Anything else I need to talk about the controls? Um, well, let's talk about the display on this thing real quick. Let's see if this thing will turn on. All right, there we go. We'll punch in on this because that is the other thing that is interesting about the controls of the Shanling EC Mini is that this is a touch screen. That's right. You have a touch screen on your CD player and it has a little interface in it that reminds me of Shanling's M0 digital audio player, like the really small digital audio player. Um, it might even be using the same operating system. I don't know that for a fact, so I don't want to say that, but you know, it's got some functionalities that you can switch between. Um, it's got like a little pull down menu where you can turn on and off high gain, um, switch from single DAC to multi DACs. I don't really honestly know what that one does. Uh, and then go from USB DAC to Bluetooth input to playing CDs or local files, right? Kind of, you know, all the functionalities that we talked about this thing having, this is how you get you access them is through this very tiny screen. Now for listening to music CDs, you don't need an elaborate display, right? For context, this is the display that I have on my old disc man, um, which is plenty. It just shows me which track number I'm at and where I'm at in the, in the, in the song. Um, this thing, because it has so many more functionalities, it requires a little bit more. And I would say that the display and the interface on this, as you might've seen me there, just struggling with it a little bit, it's a little on the small side. You can't fit a whole lot of UI in there. And then because of that, and I think, I think it's because the screen is so small and it's relying on just like swipe gestures from different directions. It can sometimes get confused and just seems to not quite do the right thing. So a little bit of a problem. Um, okay. The other thing I did want to mention briefly while we're talking about the screen is I think a missed opportunity. Um, Shanling, if you are listening and you're curious for a way to potentially improve this product, you can see, all right, I'll hit play on this thing. So it starts playing my CD. I'm currently listening to the Cures Disintegration album. And I am on track number one of 12 uh, with five minutes left. It would be really cool if this thing told me more than the fact that I'm on track one of 12. Like if this thing could connect to the internet and it does have the capability of doing that, uh, and connect to a CD database and just identify and say, you're listening to The Cure, Disintegration album. You're listening to, um, oh my gosh, what is the name of the song? This is, here, let's switch over here to this one that I do know. Uh, this is Pieces of You. It would be nice if it actually said that. Um, and again, I think it has the capabilities to do it. They just haven't built in that functionality. But I think that would make the screen a little bit more interesting um, and useful. All right. Uh, anything else to talk there about the controls and the IO? I don't think so, but just a brief note on the portability of this device. All right. Again, size wise, it is quite a bit bigger than even a very large. This is a large for the time compact disc player. This thing's even larger than that. It's heavy. Uh, it is really not very portable apart from the fact that it has batteries. So it can play portably. Obviously this thing's turned on and it's not connected to the wall right now. So that does make it kind of portable. 
Um, other things that make it kind of portable is that the anti-skip protection in this thing is actually really good. Um, I was able to walk around with this device and had no issues with music skipping, so that was good. Um, and it does come with, I think, probably the best part of the Shanley EC Mini, which is probably going to be hard for me to demonstrate here on camera, but I'll hold it up to my head and kind of, well, I'll show you as best as possible. All right, this is a, a strap accessory, right? You wear this thing around your shoulder as such. And then you get basically a Shanley EC Mini purse, which then puts the controls accessible here on the top. The screen is open there on the bottom. And you become like the world's coolest, dorkiest nerd. I don't know. I, I think this thing is like kind of cool. I haven't had a chance or an opportunity or a reason or mm, maybe the bravery to walk around with this thing in public. Uh, I did think it would be fun to like walk around Can Jam or something using the Shanling EC Mini, but unfortunately I didn't do that. Um, so I think this thing is actually a really cool accessory. It is sold separately, but pretty reasonably priced, like actually much cheaper than I expected it to be. Um, but it is an ex uh, another accessory that you'll have to buy. Um, but I do think if you get the Shanling EC Mini, you absolutely have to get the purse accessory because this thing is stinking cool. Um, the last point that I want to talk about in the portability of this device is that yes, it is battery powered, but the battery life on this guy is not great. And that's going to get us into talking about the functionality on the Shanling EC mini. Okay. Battery life on this guy is not great. And to some degree, you might expect that because there are analog components in this thing spinning a physical CD in 3d space. And that takes up energy. Um, but you would also think that maybe. It, they put a really big battery in there or something. Um, but you get, they claim seven and a half hours of battery when you play with a compact disc. If you play music just purely off the micro SD card, that jumps to like 20 plus hours. But that's certainly not the main reason I have this device in for review. I don't think that's the main reason people would be listening to this thing. So when you're listening to, to music CDs, expect seven and a half hours or maybe even less if I'm honest, like as I'm using this device and listening to music, like you can almost watch, all right, let's punch in on that. You get the battery life up here. You can almost like watch it in real time, just sync. We're starting at 66%. We'll check back on this in the end of the review. I'm gonna let this thing keep playing and, and we'll see where we're at. But yeah, the, the, the battery life in this guy is just not, just not great. Um, what is nice is that it holds a charge really well. So if you're not listening to it, if you are just, you know, using this thing occasionally and you put it, let's say on your coffee table and you pull it out a month later, it's still going to have its battery charge. And that is actually pretty important for me, especially for a device like this, which I'm probably not going to be using every day, but you kind of want it to just be available and accessible when you're in the mood to listen to a compact disc and having that, um, that really, really good battery retention, I suppose, when the thing, the thing is turned off, that's actually pretty important for me. Um, all right. Anything else to talk about battery? I don't think so. Um, so I guess let's just get into various other notes that I have on the functionality in this guy. Uh, like I mentioned, the general operation of the CD functionality is a little bit on the slow side, somewhat to be expected because one, it's a slot, a slot loading player that makes it a little bit slower. And then just reading the CD, being able to start playing like you, this is not a device like a DAP or even your phone where you can just turn it on, you know, unlock the screen and in three seconds be playing music. This thing, you got to hold the button, turn it on. It's got to power on. It's got to read the disc. It's got to search to the beginning of the track or the track one and then start playing. It takes a while, like let's say like 10, 15 seconds before this thing will start playing music for you. Maybe even longer than that. I should have timed it. Um, but yeah, generally the operation of this thing is a little bit slow. And some of that is just to be expected because it is playing compact discs. But also I think there's a couple of things in functionality wise or in the software they could have done that would have made it a little bit nicer. Like for example, this thing will very often, depending on how it powers itself off, there's like a sleep mode and a, and a hibernate mode. And I'll be honest, I'm not totally certain which mode is the better one at this point. Um, but depending on how it turns itself off, and if you use like the stop button, for example, to turn to stop the music, uh, it's going to, when you hit play again, or when you resume playing, you turn the thing back on, it's going to start over from track one, beginning of the song, beginning of the album, right? And if you're like me, I like to listen to an album, maybe I'll like stop in the middle of an album, walk away, do something, come back to it, resume playing. This thing is going to have that whole boot up time and then 
start you over from the beginning of the album, which is a little bit of a bummer. Again, it would be nice if it remembered that more consistently. And there are some ways, like there are some ways that I've put this thing into a sleep mode where it does seem to remember, but then maybe it's just over more time that it forgets. I don't really know. I, to be honest, I, I've, I've tried to figure it out, but there you go. Um, other things to talk about. Okay, uh, this is actually kind of an important point. None of these CDs are good examples, but I have a lot of CDs. I buy them used typically, and well, they'll have various degrees of scratches on them. And some of my CDs, frankly, just don't play well with some disk drives. Um, these ones are all pretty clean, so I wouldn't expect to have an issue. But even this one, right? Even this one's got a little bit, oh my gosh, you can't see crap. Even this one, I'll, oh, there you go, I swear. I swear, there you go. There's some scratches on it, right? Um, so some players, some disk drives are just not very good at dealing with scratches on disks. Um, and though that's obviously not a badly scratched disk, that, that should work on most disk drives. But I could not find any of my disks that had a whiff of a problem on this device. So that was honestly, thankfully, uh, something I was pretty happy to see is that there was just no issues playing any of my disks. That, that's kind of a bummer to have every once in a while. Again, I'll buy a CD, plug it into my computer for ripping, and then it just struggles to rip it. Kind of sucks. This thing, I think, does a pretty good job with that. So that was good. Um, on the topic, I'm just looking at my notes and some other things I wanted to talk about in terms of functionality on the topic of using this thing as a USB DAC, because again, I mentioned it's got a USB port on the back. You could plug this into your computer. You could have this thing routed to your speakers and then play CDs or then switch over to your computer and use it as a DAC. Listen to whatever is going through your computer. A couple of notes on that. One, you do have to switch over into another mode um, on this. Is it over here? Yeah. So you have to use the touchscreen to navigate over to it and then switch over to USB DAC mode, which is kind of a slow process, um, not super seamless. Honestly, that alone would probably be a reason why, in reality, I probably wouldn't really use this as an external DAC. Um, it'd be nice if it was maybe a switch on the front that I could just quickly switch back and, back and forth, or at, you know, maybe even better, just have it automatically detect, but a switch would be nice. Uh, the other reason is that there is some noticeable delay. Now, it's not a super bad delay, but if you're watching movies, YouTube videos, playing video games, the delay will be enough that it'll be annoying. I think it'll probably be more annoying for things like video games and less annoying for movies where the delay is at. There is, again, a little bit of a delay and you will probably notice it. Uh, if you're only listening to music, that delay kind of doesn't matter. Um, but if you are listening to other things that a computer does, and that's why I would potentially want to use a DAC, um, not that great. And then the last thing I will talk about, and I've kind of already alluded to this a little bit, it does accept a micro SD card. You can play your FLAC library on this thing if you want to. Um, but I don't want to for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because I've got other devices that do that better. Um, and two, th this touchscreen, the screen UI in general is just way too small for that, right? I've got 4,000 plus songs in FLAC on a micro SD card. This is not the best way for navigating that, unfortunately. So, I mean, it's kind of cool as a feature that it's there, I suppose, but it's certainly not a reason that I would buy this thing. Okay. All right. Now let's get into talking about the sound and I apologize. This is, this is going on, but this is my last section before we get to the conclusion and maybe the one that you were most excited for, although prepare yourself. I'm not a big source guy. All right. What I will say is that this thing does sound better than my old disc man. Okay. This guy, it sounds fine. It's a little bit warm, a little bit rolled off. It's kind of like representative of what older DAX sounded like, right? Again, this thing's probably pushing 30 years old. Does this have a date on the bottom of it? I don't know. I don't see it. But anyway, um, this thing does sound better than my old disc man. It just sounds crisper, cleaner. All the things that I would use to describe pretty much any modern digital audio player. So yeah, this thing sounds good. Uh, but it does it sound especially good. I don't think so. Uh, I did do some comparisons. I hooked this up to a switcher, listened to it directly against my MacBook, listening to CDs on this, obviously, and FLAC files on my MacBook, FLACs that were ripped from those CDs. Could I hear a difference? The answer is no, they sounded the same to me. Apart from the fact that this did get a little bit louder than my MacBook, again, 140 milliwatts of output at 32 ohms on single-ended, 248 milliwatts on balanced. 
So yeah, um, I will say that the noise, per noise floor performance on this guy is fantastic. Uh, and that's nice to see because I, I, mean, I guess I, I don't expect that the noise floor performance on the Discman is very good. Honestly, on a, even on a lot of other modern digital audio players, if you plug in a sensitive earphone, you can hear hiss, right? Just w during silent parts of a song, in between songs, that kind of stuff, you can hear like this background hiss. This guy, the Shanling EC Mini, zero that I could detect when I was using the Mago C K5. So that was pretty nice. Um, and frankly, I think that is going to do it for my review here on the Shanling EC Mini. I'm just checking my notes real quick. But no, I think that will do it. So uh, in conclusion, I'm not sure what I expected of this thing, to be perfectly honest, right? Ideally, I'd like something that I could hook up to my desktop, kind of have it there always available to use as a disk drive when I need it, or also just to add a little bit more fun to the experience. But uh, this thing doesn't work that well as a DAC. Uh, I can't use it as an external disk drive for my computer. Uh, I can't see the CD, so the fun factor is pretty limited. Like, I frankly might as well be listening to a FLAC file. Um, and I can't stack things on top of it. So, you know, it plays CDs well. It is a good CD player, and the build quality is really nice. It's got battery functionality, so you can take it on the, on the run. And it's got this really cool case, which, again, is kind of gimmicky, but, like, if you want to blow your friends away, that is the accessory to get. And I think it's kind of cool. Um, and for what, 360 bucks, it's, it's not bad, but I don't know. I, I'll give it three stars out of five. If you want to check it out, of course, I got it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super review. Cheers. I promise to follow up. Battery life is, we're down 2% just in the last 10 minutes. It's not great.